Today is the day in which you have uh, turned in your writing assignment. If you're at home, uh, you need to make sure you get that to me, uh, possibly email, rather than using Google Classroom. Uh, we've had some difficulties with that in the past, so it's a lot more, more creative to actually uh, write something out. I'll tell you one more thing I want to talk about concerning the Pilgrim Settlement, Plymouth Plantation. And, and that is the economic situation. When they first came, they thought, uh, being good Christians, that it would be a good idea to do as the early church did and to share everything. So everybody worked together and bringing the crops together, and then we all share it together. And that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Michaela, why do you think that didn't work? People are selfish. Even Christians can be selfish. And, uh, you know, what, what, what do you think about the idea of you working hard and your neighbor doesn't work so hard and yet you both get the same amount of food? How many like that idea? And the only ones that would like it would be the one who's not working so hard, right? And so what we're going to see is that uh, they decided that privatization was the best way to uh, to have economic development and uh, and prosperity. So we're going to watch a video today entitled "Yours and Mine," and it takes place in Plymouth Plantation. with their black hats and brass buckles? Well, after coming here for a visit, I now realize that's not what they look like. This is Plymouth Plantation, and by doing careful research, they were able to build a village just like what was here back in 1627. And not just playing the parts of pilgrims, so you can really feel what it was like back then. Much of what we think we know about them is actually wrong. Some of those crowded on the Mayflower did come for religious freedom, but others came in hopes of making money. Early on, they made a decision that has had a big impact on our lives today. One that we should think of every time we use our cell phones or our iPods. Curious? Well, here's a play that gives an accurate picture of the pilgrims, with me playing someone, well, like me. Yes. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> but don't waste your film on that. My film? You know what I mean. Now come on, let's get going. We're here to see pilgrims, not cars. 1623. So backwards. 1623. There's still an hour. There's six million books on here. What a day today. Oh my god, we can't make it. Pilgrim. If we're lucky, we'll look up and chat with our ancestors, the Fullers. Haven't they been dead for like 400 years? <laughs> That's Cape Cod Bay, and that is the meeting house, and I'm Samuel Fuller, the plantation surgeon. Surgeon, surgeon, <laughs> right. And that's my house. No, that's my house. That's Bridget, Bridget Fuller, Bridget, Bridget Fuller. She knows where my house is. She's my wife. She should know where my house is.
Now who could win? I have come here in hopes of making my fortune. Some of the others have come to build a separate church, but not me. Our London merchants have paid for our supplies and shipped us hither. We are bound to them by covenant, and so shall work together for them in common for several years. At the end thereof, we shall divide the land and our share of the profits. Sounds like apprentices completing a tax for Donald Trump. Only the contract proved a miserable failure from 1623. Indeed. The results of which we need to pay attention to even today. The economists love you, pilgrims. Dad, calm down. Say, could you point us to the Fuller Cottage? I could admit. Tis better about the bow shot. We're foolish too, we just want to say hello. Well, as you can see, I'm about to see the hen in the pot. And, uh, good day, welcome to New Plymouth. As I was saying, I'm seeding a hen, and here I'm starting a sauce for it with parsley and pepper. Where do you get the pepper? Well, it comes in supply from England. And the parsley? Oh, we grow it in our gardens. What else do you grow here? Well, Indian corn chiefly. Corn is what keeps us alive. Samuel, uh, sir, did the pilgrims, uh, excuse me, did you own your own land or do you uh, share the property? Oh, no, 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 no. We share the land. <laughs> we share everything. It's always best to share, don't you know? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Are you trying to get yourself fired? What? My husband is jesting. Uh, well, don't you remember the harvest uh, before I come over in the year 1603 and 20? One thousand and... when? Sixteen twenty-three. You wrote to me about how things had gotten worse and worse. Oh, I wrote you many letters, my dear. It's hard to recall. I <sighs> hope the guy out, Dad. Meet it. It seems I'm running low. I'd best get down to Yon Pond and find myself more. My husband is the surgeon in this town, and leeches are very useful for covering and cleaning wounds. Sixteen twenty-three again. What was the big drama? Well, if that guy playing Samuel Fuller knew anything, you'd learn that... Darn, I really wanted you to hear that from a pilgrim. I was here in 1620. I can tell you what happened. I am so sorry about before, Adrian. Bridget. Bridget. We're on a break. It doesn't matter what you call me. It matters that you don't embarrass me like that again. Okay, but what is the big brouhaha? I say Pilgrim shares stuff and everybody jumps down my throat. It's just that we're here to dispel myths, not propagate them. The Pilgrims weren't just a bunch of people sitting around a banquet table saying, pass the stuffing. Okay, I'm here to dispel a myth too. The myth that I could ever get you to go out on a date with me. What? What a real surprise. Ever since we were at the party, you know how much I wanted you to. I was suspicious, but I never thought your sole motivation for being here was that we could... You're unbelievable and deluded. And disgusting. Don't forget that one. Crash. Hey, look, there's Samuel. Just the man I want to see. Poor guy. Back at that cottage. What were you thinking? Look, I didn't say the pilgrims eat their young. I just said they share stuff. Which is diametrically opposed to the invaluable economic principle the pilgrims taught us. It's what he teaches, so everything gets turned into an economic principle. Even a trip to the mall. I'm just here to get Andrew, Bridget Fuller to fall in love with me. Uh, no, noble. And how's that working out for you? Have you tried taking her for a ride in a sweet car? Priscilla. Priscilla's right. There's a really nice, sweet set of wheels you rode you here on. Yeah, she's my baby. Uh huh. So, what do you say you and I swap cars for a year? What? Hey, the guy's always going on about how it's always good to share, don't you know? So, let's share. What are you, What is swapping cars have to do with pilgrims? Well, what's the problem? Why don't you want me to use your car or however long I want to? Because it doesn't look like you take care of it as well as I do. And why do you take such good care of your car? Because I own it. I love it. Oh, I'd love it too. I mean, take responsibility for it. Not let it rust out on me or fall apart like... Like mine. So, in short, what you're saying is you take such good care of your car because it's yours. You have a reason, an incentive to take care of it. An incentive, yeah. So what does that have to do with pilgrims? Priscilla? Here. In the fall of 1601 and 20, we celebrated our first good harvest. But that November, 
A ship arrived with five and thirty more mouths to feed, so our governor put the town on half rations. By the spring, our food stores were used up, and people grew weak, thin, some swelled with hunger. As the season approached of 1602 and 20, the elements for disaster were festering. Our workforce, already malnourished and still unskilled at growing Indian corn, and our system, where everyone shared the land and got an equal share come harvest time, was beginning to show its flowers. For it led an opportunity for some to take advantage and leave the work to others. Hmm. So whether you worked your butt off or did nothing at all, you got the same percentage? Yeah, that's flawed. So Governor Bradford came up with a plan. He described the results in his diary. After much debate and with the advice of the chief among them, I, William Bradford, decided to every family a parcel of land, allowing each man to plant corn for his own household. This had very good success, for it made all hands very industrious and gave far better content. Sharing is a good thing within a family or with people you know who are in need. The results are usually positive. But sharing with strangers often has unintended consequences. So for the pilgrims, owning their own property was the incentive that led each of them to work harder and be more productive in a strange land. Yeah, you know it's late? I gotta get going. Hey, we forgot to trade car keys. Messing with him. Come on, Sam, we got going. I'm kind of interested in hanging out, seeing if the guy's going to get the girl. Plus, I noticed there's a gift shop. The relics of the hen we have for dinner have made a good broth for the supper I'm about to share with my husband. Sam, you can you move those vermin from the table? Do you pilgrims share everything? At first, we did. We thought that the only means to begin our colony, but instead it caused much confusion and discontent. And why is that, Samuel Fuller? Because it was not unjust. There are always those who are willing to take advantage, but others do all the work. You know, leeches. In the autumn of 1,620, we brought in a harvest that was more than enough to feed us. After such a success, we will never return to shared planting, but continue to plant each man for his own. Interesting. Yes, isn't he? Not it. So, how much did all this set me back? Sorry, but all this talk about private property got me in the mood. I think you're slightly missing my point. But at least Samuel Fuller learned something today. Now, if you could just take a few tips from him. Like what? Like how to treat a car. This thing is so embarrassing. Priscilla, people do not judge you by the kind of car you... Good night. Good night. Good night. Good To give something away, fine, but should I have to do all the work while some stranger who does nothing gets all the benefits? Sharing, property rights, iPods? Do you see the connection? Would there even be iPods or cell phones without property rights? I don't think so, and I'm gonna think some more about whether it's okay for me and my friends to download music without paying the writers and performers. How much would our lives change if we couldn't own things? There's much more to learn about the pilgrims, and Plymouth Plantation is a great place to start. There's also much more to learn about the impact of these ideas. I hope you found that interesting and informative. Uh, lesson learned from those who try to approach growing food from a communal aspect. It just didn't work. And uh, private property is what allowed them to become successful. Uh, we were talking the last time we met about pilgrim children. 
I had uh, told you a few things about them that uh, maybe were surprising. I want to uh, continue talking a little bit about the uh, Pilgrim Shorter. These are fun facts. Uh, let's see, we, we had gone through, oh, I think we talked about the first four, so let's look at number five. Uh, there was no school in the early years of New Plymouth, or Plymouth Plantation. Uh, parents who wanted their children to learn to read and write taught them themselves, or had their children taught by neighbors. So it was a while before they established real schools. Uh, number six, children often slept on mattresses that were laid on the floor at night. The mattresses were usually stuffed with straw. Some children slept in their parents' bed. And then seven, children and adults probably only took baths a few times a year. They thought bathing was unhealthy. Now, I thought it might be fun for you to try to solve some 17th century riddles. Do you like riddles? Yes. All right. So you're going to you're write down your answer to these uh, so that we give everybody a chance to think about it before we uh, delve into what answers you think might be appropriate. All right. So you have to listen very carefully. Their riddles are thoughtful. <clears throat> Who is he? that runneth through the hedge his house on his back. Who is he that runneth through the hedge his house on his back? What is it? Turn on. Wait until I call on you. Uh, okay, who thinks they know? Only one person has an answer? Two people? Three? All right, Michaela, what do you think it is? How many thought turtle? No, you didn't, because you didn't say you had an answer. Before, so, so don't put your hand up now. It's incorrect. Not a turtle. Anybody have another answer? Caleb? A snail. How many said snail? That is correct. So, pat yourself on the back. Snail. So, how many two people got that? All right, here's the next one. What is 10 men's length and 10 men's strength, and yet 10 men cannot make it stand on its end? What is 10 men's length and 10 men's strength, and yet 10 men cannot make it stand on its end? Let's set out, write down what you think your answer is, and we'll see if you get it. Anybody need me to repeat it? Okay, who thinks they know? Brady? A tree. A tree. How many think a tree? No. A tree does stand on it, doesn't it? Men can't make it do that, I suppose, but that's not it. Okay, anybody else have an answer? Ten men's length, ten men's strength, but ten men cannot make it stand on its end. What do you think, Sally? I said a river. A river. Anybody else say a river? No, it's not a river. <laughs> I, it sort of fits in a way, but that's not it. Anybody else? A ship. No, not a ship. Last chance. Last chance to look really smart. The answer is a rope. Ten men's length, ten men's strength, but ten men can't make it stand on its own. A rope. Okay, let's try another one. What is it that is full all day and empty at night? What's full all day and empty at night? What's full all day and empty at night? Any 
Anybody have an idea? Michaela, what do you think? Um, a, coyote's a coyote's den. Anybody else have something like that? No. Devin? Your brain. Your brain. <laughs> your brain. Uh, some might wonder about the full all day part. Uh, uh, so, not not you, Devin. I'm, I'm talking to other people. No, not the brain. Because, you know, you're dreaming at night and all that stuff yeah. going on. What do you think, Alex? Your sense of humor. Your sense of humor. Hmm. Well, my question about about that for the day, too. Caleb, Holy. clothes. Um, you're getting close. Hey, shoes. Shoes. Yes. You pull. Your <laughs> shoes are full all day, but they're empty at night. <laughs> Anybody else say shoes? All right. So Hayden got it. All right. Let's see. We've got uh, another one here. What is it that goeth around the wood and yet cannot get in? What is it that goeth about, I'm sorry, about the wood and cannot get in? What do you mean by about is around? What is it that goeth about the wood and cannot get in? Is it that goeth about the wood and yet cannot get in? Do you have a question? Uh, they would call the forest woods. So wood would be one. One tree. Brady. Leaves. Yeah. Let's say the leaves go about the wood, around the wood. Caleb? A fence. No. Not a fence. <laughs> Michaela. <laughs> a bird. Have you ever seen a woodpecker? It's in the wood. What is it that goes about the wood that you cannot get in? Steven? And never mind. Joey? Air. Air. No, not air. Anybody else? Caleb? Grass? No. Hayden? Bark? Bark! Hayden, two in a row! <laughs> Look at this! The bark, it's around the wood, but it doesn't go in. It's on the outside. <laughs> All right. What's this? And Hayden is the, the riddle solver here. All right. One more. First, I need to explain a word. Uh, the word, um, I, I believe it's pronounced gorget or gorget. G-O-R-G-E-T. Uh, that word refers to, I don't know if you've ever noticed on uh, paintings of people from uh, 16th through 18th centuries, uh, sometimes if, if they're a military person, they'll have something hanging around their neck, and there's a, a little metal thing there. It's a protective thing. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, so George Washington, one of his paintings, he had in his military gear. There's a, a metal thing hanging right here that's protect the throat from damage during battle. Okay, that's called a, a gorget. Uh, that's how I'm, I'm thinking to pronounce it. All right, so uh, this last riddle is the hardest, I think. I am called by the name of man, yet am as little as the mouse. When winter comes, I love to be with my red gorget near the house. I am called by the name of man, yet am as little as the mouse. When winter comes, I love to be with my red gorget near the house. Any ideas? 
Kayla? It is a robin redbreast, the red gorgeous. On his throat. Very good. I don't think I've ever had anybody get it that quickly. Oh, oh, smart class. Yes. All right, so listen again. I, I'm called by the name of man, which is Robin. Robin is a, a, a name. A little as a mouse. When winter comes, I love to be with my red gorget near the house. Okay. Very good. All right, so uh, you, you guys got some of these that uh, sometimes no one gets. So that was good. That's, uh, kudos to Hayden for getting a couple that no one was even close on, and Kayla for getting that last one, which is really good. Okay, how, uh, hold up your fingers for if you guessed a riddle correctly. How many how many times did you guess a riddle correctly? So, uh, Stephanie, you got two of them? Also, you should say them oh. to us. You had the same as someone. So Hayden and uh, Stephanie got the most. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you think that's worth a kiss? Maybe. All right. Come on up and get a kiss for Mr. Henry. Okay. So when people on YouTube are wondering, oh, what's going on? <laughs> Mr. Henry, give a kiss to each of the winners. Here's your kiss. Oh, there's your kiss. I was, I was smelling it. What's that, sweetie? I said this is the part they don't see. The part they don't see. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I hope they did catch me actually giving them chocolate. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. I'm going to start the next part. The next section, we're going to be looking at another group of people called the Puritans. How many have heard of the Puritans? Okay, hopefully everybody. Uh, so we're going to be looking at them next, uh, starting tomorrow. So the time we have left, because we have covered a lot of material, even with the pilgrims, uh, that you are going to be required to remember. Uh, the rest of the time, let's uh, look over the notes we have on the pilgrims. And if you would like to quiz one another in pairs, you may do that. All right, so let's uh, review the pilgrims in the last few minutes.